How much did you make at all your software dev jobs? I'm glad you asked that actually. So my first software job was in 2019 when I had an internship over at Capital One. It was a summer internship. And before this, I had only made like $13 an hour at like a math tutor job. So when I got this job, I thought I was balling out. I was making 3,800 every two weeks, bi-weekly. And unfortunately the internship only lasted 10 weeks. So in the total, in 10 weeks, 3,800 every two weeks, I probably ended up making something like 19,000 over that summer, which for me, a lot of money for such a short amount of time, I think that was pretty much enough to almost pay like all of my student loans. So that was a lot for me. After that internship, I think I did end up getting a full-time offer from them. I didn't accept it, but I believe the salary for that full-time offer was something like 100K. It might have been 105K. There was like a one-time bonus for accepting it, which I believe was like 15K. So that was insane. Like when I got that full-time return offer, I thought I had made it. Like I secured the bag. I got a six-figure job and it's all going up from here. I wasn't satisfied though, cause I'm a try hard. So I tried to do even more. Before I graduated, I got an offer from Amazon and the offer was 108K roughly. There's like multiple components to how like big tech companies will pay. So salary was the biggest component. The other thing is RSUs and Amazon has a weird thing where they actually give you multiple sign-on bonuses. Like they'll give you sign-on for I think two years in a row. And roughly speaking, I think the RSUs in my first year were relatively low. I think it was something like 12K actually. So something like that, 12 to 14K. I believe the sign-on for the first year was actually higher, something like 22K 24k something like that so like in total adding all these up looks like 142k total so like a lot of money but unfortunately in my case i only worked there for two months maybe a little less than that i didn't get the rsus in the first place because you need to be there for like a year to get the rsus i had to return the sign-on bonus I actually got like a relocation bonus as well. I think that was something like 7K. Had to return that as well, unfortunately. Good thing I didn't spend it yet or else I would have gone completely broke. So all I really got was two months salary. That's probably like 9K per month. So over two months, it was something like 18K. So about as much as I made from Capital One. We can think of this as an internship experience. I'd like to tell people that I was an Amazon intern so I don't have to tell people the full story. That was 2020, not a good year for most of us, but things can always turn around. I think at the end of 2021 is when I got my offer at Google. Whoa, Google guys, did I mention I used to work at Google? I didn't make as much as you might think. I'd made more than I made at Amazon. Salary, it was a little bit higher. I think it was something like 118K. Sign-on bonus, actually, believe it or not, zero. Didn't get anything for sign-on bonus. The other thing was RSUs and Google is like very, very special. They like to make their employees feel special. So they don't actually call it RSUs. They call them GSUs, Google stock units, not restricted stock units. RSUs are just stock. So GSUs, I don't remember exactly how much I got. I think it was roughly 20 to 25K in the first year, something like that. might've been a little less, around 20K. Google does something else though. They give you a yearly bonus. The yearly bonus is something like 15 to 18% of your base salary. So in my case, it was probably a bit higher than 15K, maybe 18K-ish. So you add these up, I think we get somewhere around 160K total. That's like pretty much the bottom that Google will pay anybody for the location I was at. I can even prove it to you. Yeah, so here you can see this is higher because the location varies. If I could go to Seattle, they probably pay more now, but when I was there, they did not. I was pretty much paid the minimum and I'm pretty sure I know it was the minimum because like a few months after I joined, like four months or something, they actually gave me a raise and I was surprised because they don't give you a raise for no reason. So I think the reason why they did that is because they took this, which was the bottom of the band, and they actually increased it. And this is when they were having trouble 
people hiring people. This was when companies were hiring a lot. So they probably incentivized people to join. So I ended up actually getting, I think, 128K. I think in 2022 is when I got promoted. And you might think when you get promoted, you're making a lot more money. Actually, at least in my case, and I think in most cases, you don't make a lot of money from promotions at least not immediately. I think my salary probably went to something like 135K. My stocks for the first year after getting promoted did not change at all. And the bonus probably increased just because the salary increased. So maybe this was now something like 23-ish K. So in total, even after getting promoted, I went from L3 to L4. My total probably went from 160 to 180, which is great money. It's good money. I'm not complaining. But somebody with L4 level at Google can get another job, for example, at Meta, maybe even at Amazon or other companies and make more than 180k. It's good to be at least a little bit aware of how much you're making relative to other companies, depending on like the job market, because you can make a lot more. Companies aren't going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you you're actually being underpaid for your level currently, even though it feels kind of ridiculous to say you're making so much money. I had like, what, one and a half years of experience, and I'm going to say that I'm being underpaid. It feels ridiculous to say that. But if you can get more money in any circumstance and you're not getting that, technically you are underpaid.